On the 31st of October 2019, Abu Ibrahim Al Hashimi Al Karashi was announced as the new head of IS, having previously been responsible for enforcing the group's ideology in the territory it had occupied. Following the announcement of his appointment, an international manhunt was initiated to find Al Hashimi, and it wasn't until the autumn of 2021, some two years later, that a breakthrough was finally achieved when Kurdish troops of the Syrian Democratic Forces received credible information on his potential safe house, which, according to informants, was located just north of the Syrian village of Atimar and around two kilometers from the Turkish border. Based on this information, the Kurds deployed a number of individuals to monitor the building in question, and although they were unable to confirm that Al Hashimi was staying inside, large numbers of armed men were observed to be entering and leaving the premises, suggesting that the building held a high degree of importance. As such, the Kurdish forces passed their intelligence onto their American counterparts, who immediately placed the building under 24 7 aerial surveillance. Within days, the jackpot was hit, and one of the American drones made a positive identification on Abu Ibrahim al Hashimi al Karashi, who was spotted with his distinctive one leg, carrying out his daily routines on the roof of the building. With this development, the US Department of Defense considered conducting a precision airstrike to take out the IS leader. However, due to the fact there were civilians, including children, inside the target building, an airstrike was soon ruled out. Consequently, an air assault by US Special Operations Forces, with the aim of killing or capturing Al Hashimi, was proposed and formally approved by US President Joe Biden on the 20th of December 2021. There then followed a period of six weeks in which additional intelligence was gathered and the US troops earmarked for the operation carried out training, until eventually, on the 1st of February 2022, the green light was given for the raid to begin. At an undisclosed airbase in the Middle East, the American task group got airborne in the evening of the 2nd of February and flew out towards Atamar in northwest Syria. Airlifting the ground troops to the objective were a handful of MH-60M Black Hawk helicopters of the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, whilst US Air Force fighter jets, surveillance aircraft and MQ-9 Reaper drones provided overwatch throughout the operation. In addition, either AH-64 Apache or MH-60L Direct Action Penetrator helicopters were tasked with providing close air support for the ground troops once landfall had been made. As can be expected, the units to which the ground troops belonged hasn't been disclosed, although it has been speculated that they were from the 75th Ranger Regiment and the 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, also known simply as Delta Force. Flying out over northern Syria, the American task group arrived above Atamar just after midnight on the 3rd of February 2022. On their arrival, the US ground troops fast roped down from the Black Hawk helicopters and secured the area around the target building. Unfortunately, it was not long after the infiltration had been made that one of the Black Hawks suffered a mechanical failure and had to be withdrawn from the raid. The aircraft was subsequently flown 5 kilometers to the north, where it was abandoned by its crew and later destroyed by US forces. In spite of this setback, the rest of the task group continued on with their mission, and once the perimeter around the target had been secured, an Arabic-speaking American soldier used a bullhorn to encourage those inside to surrender without a fight. Following the calls to surrender, six civilians, including four children, emerged from the first floor of the target building and were swiftly moved to a safe location by the US troops. However, just moments afterwards, an explosive device was detonated on the building's third floor, which not only collapsed a section of the house, but also killed four individuals, among them a female, two children, and the high-value target, Abu Ibrahim Al Hashimi Al Karashi. In the aftermath of the explosion, an American assault team moved up to and began clearing the inside of the objective, during which small arms fire was received from the second floor. General Kenneth McKenzie, the commander of the US Central Command, later explained that. As US forces continued inside the building and began making call-outs to the second floor, two barricaded combatants, a male and a female, hiding among children, began firing at US forces. 
In this engagement, one child was found deceased along with the two combatants. On gaining entry onto the second floor, the US troops found an additional four children seeking shelter in the various rooms, all of whom would be removed from the premises and evacuated from the area without further incident. Meanwhile, as the clearance of the building was underway, a small enemy force was observed to be moving towards the operational area. Immediately, one of the close air support helicopters, either an Apache or a direct action penetrator, was sent out to deal with this threat, and after an exchange of gunfire, two of the enemy fighters were killed, whilst the remainder withdrew in the direction they had come from. With their objective secured and Abu Ibrahim al-Hashimi al-Karashi neutralised, the American ground troops spent the next hour and a half on site, gathering what intelligence they could and collecting DNA samples, before re-embarking onto their Black Hawks and extracting themselves out from the area. By 0300 on the 3rd of February 2022, around two hours after the operation had begun, the final American aircraft had departed from northwest Syria. Last night, operating on my orders, the United States military forces successfully moved a major terrorist threat to the world, the global leader of ISIS. I'm grateful for the immense courage and skill and determination of our U.S. forces, who skillfully executed this incredibly challenging mission. The members of our military are the solid steel backbone of this nation ready to fly into danger at a moment's notice to keep our country and the American people safe as well as our allies. Last night's operation took a major terrorist leader off the battlefield, and it sent a strong message to terrorists around the world. We will come after you and find you. Once again, today, we continue our unceasing effort to keep the American people safe and to strengthen the security of our allies and partners around the world. I want to thank you all, and may God bless you, and may God protect our troops.